guys to yet another episode of Conversations and on this episode we are talking about a car that many of you would like to bash or a car would <laughs> love to bash as well. It's a car that has been associated with the Wamama uh, and Team Kitaka. Most of you guys associated with that particular niche of people. But I have to admit that the 2014 version of it looks good, it looks sleek, and it's arguably the best looking in its category. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we are bringing you an up close and candid conversation on the Toyota Harrier U65 2014. And as usual, Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. I'll be your host, Eric Wokabi. Follow me personally on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Eric Wokabi, Eric with a CK. Also, do follow Conversations on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's get up close and candid with the U65. Now, before we join, we have to say that we have to confuse what. So, what is the Toyota Harrier nomenclature? Toyota Harrier U60 means that it's a 2014 to 2020 Toyota Harrier uh, with uh, two wheel drive configuration. That means it's a uh, front wheel. And the U65 means that it's a Toyota Harrier from the generation uh, from 2014 to 20, 2020 with, uh, with an all wheel drive. Uh, configuration. So, upper to Copa Moja, U60, U65, U62 wheel, U65 four wheel. And I must comment about the looks. You know, sita ongea sana. This vehicle, comparing it to its previous, to the previous generations, eh, the predecessors, this car has a killer look. And that's why I told you guys, it's arguably the best looking crossover SUV in the Kenyan market space today. What are the notable features? The notable features in terms of looks. First of all, the headlights, manze, nice and long. Toyota's uh, design language, you know, at a, also Lexus, they do follow, you know, Akoka design language having long but uh, very slender and sleek headlights. The grille, my, 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 my. You have this uh, plastic glass topping and you have the Harrier Eagle right there looking all vicious and fast. The bumper again looking very sleek with uh, this lip down here, although it's still plastic and vents that, you know, these vents make sure that your radiators are cool enough. Uh, all, but the clearance, well, for a crossover SUV is not SUV is not pretty decent in the front. And you have a little trick here. You have a camera that faces the front. Now this for the, you know, that Toyota safety package, uh, collision control, also peer. Ukiwa and Dani and you're cruising somewhere, unaza, unaza eliminate the blind spot. You can see what is going on in front of you. And also you have those, uh, you know, you can get pedestrian warnings. Wakati watu wanavuka vuka kwa barabara. Nice chrome appendage here. <laughs> <laughs> makes it looks a bit makes it look a bit more fancy and i would like us to look at the side profile of the harrier u65 now uh, this one has a hybrid badge so it's a hybrid i'll talk about this when we get to look at the motor they also now the hybrid ones do come with uh, a few chrome appendages just to to, you know, to, to, to make it look, uh, to stand out from the non-hybrid ones. Uh, alloy ribs do come in as standard. Again, you have this plastic protective lining to prevent it, to prevent those shrubs when you're going uh, off-road from scratching your paint. Chrome also, and you also have chrome door handles. Uh, the aerodynamic design, uh, coupled up with a spoiler in the rear, makes, making this vehicle do stand out. You know, it looks aggressive and refined all in one, you know, that, that, that package. The tail lights also long, slender. So and it's, it's very different compared to its predecessors. It, I must admit, it looks, it just looks good. Then you have this Toyota badge right there in the middle and the hybrid synergy, synergy drive. Toyota calls the hybrid systems hybrid synergy drive. This particular U65 is a hybrid and I'll tell you one, two, three things about the hybrid system of this car and its difference from the non-hybrid one. Also, you see this badge has a little bit of blue. It tells you something about it being a hybrid. For a person who is looking for a crossover SUV, Boot space is practice. By the way, I'm going to park the car in the car. So I'm 
still of relevant height. One thing you have to consider when you're buying a crossover SUV is practicality and practicality does not come without uh, you having boot space. The tailgate is electronically controlled, meaning in as a jifungua, and you have pretty decent boot space. And I reckon that this boot space, you know, it's, it's more spacious compared to the Subaru Forester. And you remember in our, in our other series, no, the Mazda CX-5 had the largest boot space, but now with the Harrier, it's even larger than that of the CX-5. And guess what? The infotainment system spreads out up to the rear with these JBL speakers coming in as stock, man. You don't get that every day. Then, uh, do, can we see how many Mbuguas can fit in this uh, boot? Come on, Mbugua. Kazi, 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 kazi. The SI unit for boot space. The Kupiga Boost. So, you see, you can comfortably fit a Mbugua. Luggage, the size of Mbugua is quite a lot of luggage and you can still fit in a few more things. So I reckon it's larger than the boot space that you would get in a Mazda CX-5. Thank you, Mbugwa. And uh, let's talk about my favorite part, the engine. Under the hood of the Harrier is an engine that Waseo may complain about for quite a while. You see, these Harriers are packing in some uh, very, very small engines. Now, this one comes with uh, a 2AR FXE. I told you, we, in Toyota's nomenclature, X stands for hybrid. This is the talking head to Tafanya. Why, what do Toyota's, uh, you know, the Toyota nomen engine nomenclature? So, this one is, uh, they both have two liters. The ones you'll get in the Kenyan market space, most of them are coming with a two liter 3 ZR or uh, the two liter 2AR. Uh, which is hybrid and that's why you can see the badge here hybrid synergy drive then you have the battery Sasa, up there is something I would like you guys to note here you have the battery for the hybrid synergy drive now the Toyota Harrier is it a mild hybrid or a full hybrid this one is uh, okay we can call it a full hybrid because it can run on the electric motor independently the hybrid one at a huta ski kiguruma and it's very economic on fuel this vehicle can give you up to 18 kilometers per liter for a crossover suv man that's 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 very good fuel economy and i must i must say that this is one of the this is my favorite harrier on the toyota harriers lineup the other thing i have to tell you is that there is there is the hybrid version and the non-hybrid version so what where is the biggest difference one of the differences is the gearbox with the hybrid version, the hybrid, this one comes with a gearbox. Both of them do come with CVT gearboxes, but now this one comes with what we call an eCVT. It's a, a CVT gearbox that Toyota makes for specifically for hybrid engines. Uh, it also has that seven-speed simulator. It, it's you know it's it has that simulation that it's a seven-speed. Although you know I told you something about. Uh, CVTs and uh, those simulations. The other thing with an unhybrid one, you get uh, what we call an intelligent CVT or iCVT. Uh, that is uh, Toyota's intelligent CVT that is tuned towards uh, giving you fuel economy. CVTs never give you driving thrill, but it's also simulated. It can give you up to seven speed transmission. It has that simulated. Yani, ikona to vitu to paddle shift in a fanya ufikiriye. You're driving a seven speed, uh, but in, in real sense, you can only experience paddle shifts the best when you're driving an automatic transmission these ones uh, both both uh, models are available in the kenyan market space coming from japan or singapore uh, do have do come with the ecvt for the hybrids and the icvt for the non-hybrids so let's take a look at the interior of this vehicle uh, inside the 2014 Toyota Harrier uh, U65, there is that feel of utter luxury. And that is why I told you guys, it's, it's the only Harrier I'm in love with. And uh, forget all the prejudice that has come with this vehicle. I feel it's, it is worth the price because just sitting in here gives you that ultimate touch of luxury. You have leather even on the dash. Not much plastic. Eh? You also have semi-leather seats, uh, a 
plastic wooden finish. You also have a very nice infotainment system, cameras to monitor, to monitor uh, the pedestrians crossing. This one has come also with a, with a dash cam and a sunroof. I do love sunroofs. The sunroof is optional. Uh, the gear lever just positioned like the old Harrier. And let me tell you something about this particular Harrier. Did you know that this one came to replace the Vanguard? Yes. Igarin you may replace Vanguard. So as from 2014, we will not have Isama Guard is our principal. So, so secondary school principals and head teachers for primary school can no, I want to in the Shanga field. So this is the new thing, man. Now, apart from having memory seats, huh, the Harrier also comes with uh, you know, is in to make a telescopic zinavuta unapeleka unapeleka ju. But guess what? This one even has a a steering wheel with the memory of where you had it last or in the shanga. So when you put it on, it brings it to the last position where uh, where it was um, where it was before. The other interesting thing is the steering yakushinda ukishika shika. No, this one you just control it electronically to the position you feel it's the, the, the most comfortable position that you can get. Other thing is that you have steering controls for the infotainment system. You can pick your phone call from uh, your phone calls from here. You can also switch off lane assist, uh, the the also uh, collision warning systems. That is when you're in uh, traffic. Very interesting infotainment system. You have JBL speakers all around, and you have six of them. Yeah, six of them. Uh, the other thing, you, you can switch off traction control, you can put in your auto headlights. And now, and now you can you have the panel to control uh, the, the, you know, the, the, rear, the side mirrors and also Kupandisha VO. You know, you have a very, nice, uh, a very nice console here for that. And also now the leather stitching on the door cards, make, give, bringing, bringing in that feel of utter luxury. And remember, you can also, if, if you're not, if you're not comfortable with this nice infotainment system, you can switch it with a, to an Android system. But I, I really don't know why you would not be comfortable with this infotainment system because it's, it's pretty fancy and pretty nice. Uh, the only problem is that most of them will come in <laughs> Japanese. About the convenience of storage, one thing I have to mention is that it resembles the Toyota Crown Sana. So you can just push this to open up your cup holders. You have uh, USB ports right here and an auxiliary port uh, out here as well. 12 volt power output and another small compartment here. You can close this up and get even more storage here whereby you, you can put, put your phone for uh, wireless charging and put it on and off. Also, you do have another storage compartment inside there and about convenience you don't have storage compartments up here but Antia Kiweka makeup <laughs> you have this light over here but I think we need, we need to stop profiling people because I'm Antia Haria where this comes in handy Kuala watu wanafanya makeup I don't think I need makeup <laughs> so I think with that um, the other thing when it comes to a luxury vehicle you need you know, very good AC. You take when you kill me, you make them shave you or go go high end. What then? When you take when you can't sana, not unless when you wanna be. So you have dual zone uh, climate control inside the Harrier. So it makes you make it makes sure that you are very comfortable when you're enjoying the drive in this vehicle. Let's check out the rear row of seats. On the rear row of seats, guess what? The luxury is not compromised. You still have. Uh, Almost full leather, only that you have now this uh, this little uh, layer of fabric. Then uh, for the dual zone climate control, look on uh, na, na, you know the, the the vents here for the AC. Still leather stitching on the door cards, and you can control your Kio uh, Jua Machini. The, the other thing you have you have adaptive headrests. You can also pull this right here, uh, and then you have this other compartment over here that pulls out to give you cup holders. You see, like we had in the C200 Benz, yes, you also get that in the Harrier. That's why I'm telling you this car, it's extreme luxury, despite the, in spite of the fact that it's, it's a Toyota. The only trade-off you might have is that it's not as hardy as maybe other crossover SUVs, or even Harriers, 
in its uh, previous generation. One thing I really would advise, if you're getting a crossover SUV, always try to get an all-wheel drive one. Sabu, sijai pata sense ya kukuwa na crossover SUV, uh, either compact or mid-sized, that is two-wheel drive. Doesn't really make much sense. Uh, this vehicle is engineered for four passengers. You can once in a while fit in a fifth one here. Ule mse na semango wa lift. And atakuwa a bit comfortable because there is no hump. Remember, this car is uh, front wheel drive uh, oriented because the engine has a transverse mount. So the, the bias is towards the front wheels. And kuna wasi wanauliza, transfer case ya igari kwa api. Remember, this one is all wheel, not four wheel. If it, if it was four wheel drive, you'd have a bigger hump down here. Legroom is very decent compared to the CX-5 or the Forester. This is the car to be in. Although, do you think that it's fair we, com we, co we compare the... The, the 2014 Harrier uh, U65 to the Forester or the CX-5. I feel, well, yes and no, because those ones are more likely to co to compete against the, you know, the RAV4, but it's still a mid-sized crossover SUV. So meaning, yes, they do compare directly. And uh, as I'm here, let's also talk about value before I get to drive this car. Uh, this car is going for around between 3.2 to 3.4 mic depending on the accessories that are on it uh, it's 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 pretty it's competitors are mostly between 2.6 million to around 2.8 million 2.9 million so it's it's way above the price tag of competition but i believe it's in a class of its own is it value for money well if if you were to if you had 3.2 million or 3.4 million remember the c200 we did a review of well, it's a Benz, it's more expensive, but I feel that the Harrier is a bit more practical. But now, when you're a person who is spending that, that kind of money, it's all about orientation. My personal orientation would be practicality. I, I want once in a while to go off-road. So, do I think that the Harrier, the 2014 Harrier U60 or U65 is value for money? Well, yes, I feel it is value for money, especially these hybrids. They, they you know, they are, they are pretty good. They... Uh, they save you fuel and they give you performance at the same time. So is it value for money? According to me, yes, it is value for money, although it's in a class of its own. So if you have like 3.4, between 3.2 million to 3.4 million Kenya shillings, why don't you spoil yourself and buy a Harrier? You don't have to be a mama for you to buy a Harrier. This one is a bit more masculine. Its, it's predecessor was a bit more feminine, but this one I feel it's, 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 it's unisex, yeah? It will profile you as a serious person. Only that wakenya wa meharibuji na hari ya sana. Let's take this baby for a drive. It's a very beautiful day to be driving around in the U65 Harrier. And there, there, there are two, th two things I would like to tell you first of all before uh, I tell you about now the vehicle. So, uh, this vehicle has been given to us by uh, Newton's Premium Autos. As you have noticed, they have, uh, they have always been giving us uh, cars to review. And uh, big up Newton, to Mefurai Sana. Thank you for supporting the channel. And now let's get to the car. Uh, remember I told you about the luxury feel of the Harrier U65 and uh, uh, apparently this is my favorite Harrier so far. I think it's the best looking and also the interior is uh, you know, quite impressive as well. The other funny thing, uh, this one specifically is a hybrid. Uh, it's, uh, uh, the, the engine inside uh, under the hood is a mere 2 litre. And so many guys have really complained about Harriers, uh, these new generation uh, from 20, 2014 onwards, being uh, having a very small engine. But let me tell you something about about either the non-hybrid or the hybrid. For me, I would I would take for me I would always take the you know the hybrid. Why? Now the hybrid uh, has an additional electric motor which adds on to that uh, punch of power. Uh, aiding that two litre engine yeah and don't underestimate it for being a two litre because it's uh, you know it, it, it is quite powerful and now the fun part about this car is that you have three driving mode modes 
The good thing about hybrids is that they can give you performance, yet, better still, they can save you fuel. This Harrier has, um, it has two, three driving modes actually. You have uh, the charging mode. Charging mode, you will use charging mode or charge if uh, you're in traffic or driving at speeds below, say, 40 kilometers per hour. Uh, then you also have eco mode. Eco mode now is when you're driving, uh, you know, at slightly higher speeds. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it gets to save you fuel as well. Then you have power mode. Now, when you want to bring uh, the juice out of the Harrier U65, you get to power mode and it, it turns from beauty to beast. The only problem I have with this vehicle is in, in terms of handling. In spite of the fact that uh, the Harrier has really improved in terms now of uh, physical handling, it feels very light. And that's not good for cornering. Uh, body roll, well, compared to the previous generation Harrier, uh, it has slightly improved just this much. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to driving fast, uh, you might not get as much fun on the corners. But because in a feel light, you know, it's a, a, most crossover SUVs like the Forester, the CX-5, the Tiguan, they do feel a little bit bulky. But now this one feels like you're driving a saloon or a super mini or a big vitz. It's bulky and light. I, I prefer bulky and heavy. But uh, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's a good drive. Uh, you can switch. Remember, it has so many driver assist features to help you cruise, cruise around safely. Uh, and then the other impressive part about this car is that it's, it's so silent especially when you're in ev mode you can't feel a thing yeah but uh, cabin noise cabin noise is also minimal come uh, but but I, I reckon the toyota crown has you know more the, the the noise in the crown is more minimal more minimal but uh, on this one especially if you have uh tires say mud terrain tires or all terrain tires you're bound to hear the road noise in the car about off-road capabilities, despite the, uh, this is an all-wheel drive, and in spite of that, it's it's more of a soft road. You can't take it to extreme off-road. It's it's a bit fragile, and that is happening with uh, most crossover SUVs in the market today. Uh, they are not build hardy, but generally, uh, for a luxury vehicle, for a luxury crossover SUV. What would what, what would be my take on this car? My take would be uh, it's it's a pretty decent car, and it still remains to be my favorite Harrier in the Toyota Harriers lineup. The drive quality, it is uh, yeah it it can go fast, but in terms of interacting with the vehicle, you do not have that much interaction since uh, I told you the hybrid has what Toyota call an ECVT, which is uh, a CVT that they have made specifically for their full hybrid vehicles. Eh? Uh, yeah, so you, you don't expect, it has a seven speed simulation that you can uh, turn the shifter to manual mode. But I told you manual in a CVT in a scam, manual mode in a CVT in a scam. Also, uh, it, it does not give the driving thrill. It and ambio, but in terms of you bonding with the car, you interacting with the car. If you're buying this car to enjoy the drive, uh, you will not get the drive. But quality of the drive on a scale of one to ten, I would give it a six. Interior comfort on a scale of one to ten, I would give it an eight. Uh, fuel economy, I would give it an eight. Or even no, let's give it a nine because it can uh, power speed. I would give it an 8, so it's a pretty decent. The only way it fails mostly is handling and, you know, yeah, handling and also uh, the fact that it's it's quite light for a crossover SUV. Oh, one more thing. The brakes. The brakes on this car are just too sharp. Yeah, you because I kufunga mshipi utakula windscreen. Yeah, they are just too, 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 too sharp, which is both a good thing and a bad thing yeah but uh, they are very 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 sharp so if you're driving one of these have it in mind that uh, the brakes are extremely sharp but 
it also has regenerative braking so the the once you brake uh, the friction from the brake the heat energy is used to recharge the battery the electric uh, the, the the you know the battery that stores the charge that you use when you're on charging mode so that's it with the driving experience of the u65 harrier yeah auntie and uh, let me try and just cruise around and uh, feel rich <laughs> so over and out And it's a wrap guys for today's episode of uh, the 2014 Toyota Harrier review. And I would like us to tell, t do tell us in the comments, what do you think about the Harrier? I think it's value for money. What do you think about it? Do you think it's a car worth buying? Well, I think so. Tuambie. And uh, we value your feedback a lot. Remember, tunakusaidia pia ukita kununua gari. We can import one for you or we can do pre-purchase inspection kabla ugongwe sticks ukinunua gari. So, the other thing before I wrap up is... Uh, one thing that we base our reviews on is uh, value for money. That is the key pillar of this car, of these reviews. Because now the Harrier has uh, an untainted reliability track record. So it, it has been, it's arguably one of the most reliable crossover SUVs in the Kenyan market space. And before I sign out officially, do remember to follow us across our social media platforms, Conversations on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Also do follow me at a personal level, Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as well. Na pia mkumbuke kushare, subscribe. We need those subs. Uh, also kama unataka kuchangia to give us, uh, to, to, to help us uh, bring you this Alluring content, uh, please enter pala kuna link yata pesa, fanya kitu and we will be able to continue bringing you this amazing and insightful content. Till next time, do tell us, mnataka tuwalete crossover SUVs ya inagani. Ama, ni garigani ingine mnataka tulete kwa the ultimate crossover series. Pia ma wagons tuwaletea, wagons ingine, we know nobody has reviewed before. So, over and out, till next time, stay safe guys, wahiri.